Right. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let, let's talk about sex hormone binding globulin. So, the reason why I'm doing this video is because one of my guys who's transferred over from Sustanon to Ananthate is a bit confused because his SHBG has risen. Now, why has his SHBG risen? Well, because he's actually more optimized. What tends to happen with overaggressive protocols and people on Sustanon is their SHBG tends to drop and it tends to drop quite dramatically. And what it does is it just reflects the fact that your protocol is aggressive. You don't really want to manipulate your SHBG level. Now, why don't you want to manipulate it? Because obviously if you decrease your SHBG, you're potentially freeing up that lovely free testosterone and some estrogen to make you feel cracking. So why don't you want to manipulate your SHBG? Well, the simple reason is, is because it serves a function. Much like all hormones, all proteins, all the chemicals in your body, they have a function. So what is the function of sex hormone binding globulin? Because it binds to testosterone. It's like, oh no. Well, actually you want it to bind to testosterone. Otherwise you just metabolize it and uh, you wouldn't actually feel the qualitative benefits of having a constant androgen level. So what it does is it helps mediate the transfer of testosterone to within the cell and also helps the expression of the testosterone within the cell. So it has a really important role. So you don't actually want to mess with it. What do you want to do then? Well, what you want to do is you want to optimize your male androgen levels so that your sex hormone binding globulin finds its natural level. We screw around too much. God, you know, testosterone replacement therapy should be replacing the testosterone and replacing the LH with HCG. And then you look to the other adjuvants to sort of see if they're necessary. But the premise behind it should be simply replacing the testosterone and replacing the LH with HCG. So on an optimized TRT protocol, your SHB, SHBG will find a natural level. You do tend to find a very slight drop in SHBG with normal TRT protocols. Um, and what's interesting is the low SHBG guys, when they're optimized, they find that SHBG rises, which is brilliant because that actually says that they are actually more healthy. You know, there are health consequences of having low SHBG. Increased risk of metabolic syndrome, diabetes, etc. There are health consequences of having a high SHBG. Or it's actually, no, it's not consequences, it's a marker. So, um, elevated sex hormone binding globulin is associated with hyperthyroidism and liver dysfunction. So, obviously, you want to correct those elements to optimize your SHBG. So, you know, you again, we just have to get around this idea that all hormones have a function, all proteins have a function, and we are looking for normal, which is optimized. Normal is optimized, optimized is normal. And that's what we need to get into our heads. So, sex hormone binding globulin. Should you mess around with it? No. What should you do? I mean, there are certain dietary things you can do to try and manipulate your SHBG. You go low carb, high carb. Um, but, you know, one can't necessarily advocate one or the other based on simply your sex hormone binding globulin level. 
You know, there are things like boron that you can take, like a mineral that you can buy across the counter that will help decrease your sex hormone binding globulin. I'm not sure that it does anything apart from optimize function. So, um, you know, you don't want to necessarily mess around with your SHBG. You want to optimize your male androgen levels. You want to correct any patholo pathologies that may be causing your SHBG to be elevated or deficient. That's what you need to do. Now, an interesting drug is something called mesterolone, called proviron, which binds to SHBG, um, which potentially frees up some free testosterone and estrogen. Um, it's no longer available in the UK, however, we are have we have access to it here at the men's health clinic, uh, so you'll have to be a men's health clinic patient if you if you want it. Um, and there are certain circumstances that you would actually use something to manipulate your SHBG. So I'm not going back on everything that I've said, but there are certain situations where we have had guys with very normal or actually quite high testosterone levels who have had subsequent high SH, SHBG levels and there has not been a pathology uh, or a logical reason why the SHBG is elevated and we have actually had great success from treating these guys with SHB with um, proviron sorry um, but again it's always that work in progress. It's always that, well, what else can I do? What, what other aspects of my life can I, can I do change to try and optimise my SHBG? Now, you know, we are unfortunately prone to liver dysfunction. Now, chemicals, booze, all sorts of things that we, we mess around with um, do have a negative impact on our SHBG. So these things do need to be addressed. We did look back in the day at the idea of using mesterolone alongside testosterone and HCG. Now the purpose of that would obviously be to increase your DHT component, um, and potential, which would potentially obviously lead to an increase in your libido. But do you know what? Universally, it wasn't, it wasn't well tolerated. Uh, either the, the people didn't have any positive benefit from it, or they had some negative symptoms of lower urine, lower urinary tract symptoms, um, so prostate symptoms. So some of the guys that we did trial it didn't like it. So we did only have a few guys who had these very normal SH, um, normal testosterones, but high SHBGs, that did have a positive effect from trialing mesterolone. So, SHBG, don't mess around with it. Look to optimize other aspects of your lifestyle, your liver function, thyroid function. Uh, look to the usuals, lifestyle, nutrition and exercise. <sighs> Sex hormone binding globulin, it has a function, allow it to perform that function. Simples.